Hello everyone and welcome back to week 10. This second video will focus on the radio industry as well as other types of radio formats. So radio formats are the type of programming that a station produces either within a show or as a station as a whole. There are over 15,000 radio stations in America and yet there are only 40 station formats. So Typically, stations will choose one type of format that they're known for, such as uh, WJOX here in Birmingham is a sports radio station, so they follow the sports station format. Uh, but it's important to note that a single station may have various types of programming offered, like they may have a talk show in the morning and then play radio in the afternoon. And in fact, 10% of stations switch their formats every single year, trying to find more listeners. Now, it's important to remember that individual DJs or disc jockeys are not the ones that determine what type of music is played on music radio formats. Instead, music is determined by ownership and uh larger managers, and then the DJs are just the local personalities that introduce the music. It's also important to know the distinction between talk and news because those often get overlapped in radio. Talk is opinions and entertainment type news, while news is the journalistic style that print and broadcasters use, which is primarily objective and not biased. So those are two different things, and yet they're often lumped into the same type of radio format. Now, we just talked about news talk. This is a format that's targeted to adults who are over 35. The, this format has the most number of stations dedicated to this particular format. And yet it's the second most popular format based on listening share, which is 12% of the audience. Adult contemporary or AC radio is targets adults 40 and over. It's usually a mix of news, talk, oldies, and soft rock. Contemporary hit radio is the top 40 stations. This primarily targets teens and young adults. The oldie stations are listeners who grew up in the 50s and 60s, and now oldies is categorizing itself as the 70s and 90s, which, you know, apparently I'm now listening to oldies music uh, because I'm just getting older. It's very sad. Um, the most popular format for stations in the United States, according to listening share, though, is country music radio uh, this is the most popular format uh, in the country at a 13.2 listening share. However, during morning drive time, news talk radio is actually the most popular. Another uh, very popular type of radio format is urban. This targets primarily black audiences in large metropolitan cities and recent uh, Spanish language radio has become very popular in populations that have larger Hispanic audiences, such as Miami, New York, Chicago, Vegas, Arizona, and Texas. Now, in as of 2018, radio still reaches more Americans a week than any other media platform, perhaps other than, than the basic internet. But 272 Americans six years or older listen to radio each week, making it a very profitable industry. In terms of how uh, ownership works in the radio industry, because radio is still one of the most used mass media and reaches 93% of the US population each week, a lot of advertising is still dedicated to radio. In fact, about 10% of all of the US advertising is spent in radio which is a $17.6 billion a year industry. In 2017, McDonald's was the number one advertiser on radio and they spent over $46 million on radio ads. Now in terms of ownership, iHeartMedia, which was, is, was formerly Clear Channel, is the largest radio company with 849 stations across the United States. They have over 110 million registered users online, so they remain the largest owner in the radio industry. Now, payola is still a major problem in the radio industry. You may remember from 
our lectures on uh, popular music, that payola is when a record company pays the DJ to play certain songs to make them more popular. This is illegal. However, it is still something that happens today. Now, the Telecommunications Act of 1996 uh, allowed the FCC to eliminate most radio ownership restrictions. Pri prior to 1996, you could not own more than seven radio stations across the United States, and you could only own one per city or market area. Now, the larger the city, the more you can own, and the typical rule is that you can own up to eight radio stations in a city, but no more than five of either FM or AM broadcast. So you can see that ownership is uh, becoming more monopolized and owned primarily by the same companies. Low power FM stations or LPFM gives local groups access to public airwaves. These are typically used for religious or school purposes, although many um, Native American tribes and underserved populations use these as well. They only have a reach of about five miles, however, so they are hyper local radio. As I said, uh, radio ads are a billion dollar industry. In 2018, over $7.5 billion was spent and T-Mobile was the largest uh, marketer on radio ads. Now there, there are many other types of radio broadcasts. The first is non-commercial. And this was really going back to the heart of what the broadcast licenses were originally created to establish was a public service medium meant for every person. Um, and really uh, the original licenses for radio were given under the idea that it would not be a commercial enterprise. So this is the same format that public radio uses NPR has 32 million listeners each week and also often have loose variety formats. Now NPR has many local stations uh, as well. So we have our own NPR station here in Birmingham, but they rely more on donor support and uh, fundraising rather than relying on commercials. Satellite radio is another type of radio format. Sirius XM is the largest provider of satellite radio with over 34 million subscribers. And interestingly enough, automakers began to invest in satellite radio. And so you may notice that if you buy a new car, you will get a certain amount of time free with Sirius XM. And all of your new cars are likely going to have satellite radio installed in them because many automakers are actually invested in the business or industry of satellite radio. Another type of radio format is HD radio. This uh, became popularized in 2004. It allows FM and AM stations to multicast to digital signals. And there are over 2,200 stations that utilize HD radio. Internet radio, however, has been the most popular um, in, in recent years. This is... Uh, two different ways that you can do this. Either you're a traditional radio broadcast and also stream an on-air version of what you're playing on your radio station. There are over 10,000 radio stations in the country that do this. But there are also radio stations that are exclusive to the web, such as iHeartRadio and Pandora, and that has become a popular form of radio as well. In fact, 52% of Americans 12 to 34 years old say internet radio is how they find new music. Now, one of the fastest growing aspects of the radio industry is podcasting, and really smartphones are what are driving the usage of podcasts. And so you can see that they've had 157% increase uh, in smartphone podcasting since 2004, and that actually ended, that, this study ended in 2017, and it's grown even more since then. Statistics show that in 2019, there were 700,000 podcasts with 29 million episodes, but by 2020, there are over 81 million registered podcasts with 34 million episodes. So you can see that growth just in a period of one year. 
who listens to podcasts? Well, the average age of listeners is the 12 to 34 year old market, although it's very closely followed by the 35 to 54 market. 63% of podcast listeners are white and they take, they tend to make more money um, than the average U S population. 41% of monthly podcast listeners have household incomes over $75,000 while the U S population that, uh, economic demographic only makes up a 29% of the overall population. So podcast listeners tend to be of higher socioeconomic status as well. Now, podcasts continue to rise in prominence. You can see in the United States, we've uh, seen over a 5% growth from 2019 to 2020 in terms of listeners, but it's also very popular in European countries such as Sweden, Norway, Denmark, and the UK. Now, some of the most popular podcasts on Apple, this is as of October 2020, are The Anatomy of Murder, The Daily, which is the New York Times podcast, Crime Junkie, The Ben Shapiro Show, and Joe Rogan Experience. So you can see just in this top 10, you have news formats, you have true crime, you have comedy. Um, and so there are many different types of rate of podcasts, and that's really what drives their popularity is the various types of interests that they serve. So now that we've discussed the radio industry, I want you to go ahead and go into your discussion board and talk about podcasting's impact on radio broadcast. And then you can prepare for next week's lessons by reading chapter six on TV and cable. As always, if you need me for anything or have any questions about the class, feel free to reach out at any time.